Out of here. I'm playing a bad monster this time. This is episode two. <laughs> you wake up inside a well-appointed hovel. This is your home now. Start living in as, as an adolescent monster. Alright, let's go into the world. Explosion. You, Nash Nash and the Scrapegoat, are having an impromptu picnic in the street. The fresh moss you dunk in your tea is delicious. Some birds twittering and chirping in a friendly way. Circle and land among the crumbs. Okay. The birds start pecking the crumbs, but then they hop on you and peck at you too. You have crumbs on you and they want them right now. See how they like it. Peck the birds back. You peck furiously at the birds until most are vanquished. The rest of the picnic is peaceful. Nash Nash gives you two claws up and the scapegoat seems impressed as well. Good. Birds can totally hurt when they do that. Let's do tires and garbage. Blistery dumps a double armload of objects on the ground. I found these in the woods. Nash Nash grabs one, a piece of yellow metal, and licks it. Lick something, how bad can it be? It tastes pretty bad. The muddy coggy just like tastes like rust and mold, and not the delicious kind of mold, the whole the horrible horrible sour kind. Uh, let's pretend it's delicious and trick others into licking horrible stuff. In no time you have half a dozen other monsters rolling on the ground, clutching their tongues in their claws, groaning at the awful flavors. Laugh! Laugh at them, the fools! Some of your victims try to get up to punish you, but they're still confused from the bad taste in their maws. You escape with your hide intact. Ha 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 ha. Tower. You and Gobclaws are playing Toss the Kitten. You're winning two to one. When crash, you miss. Mm, whoops. And the kitten shatters hamrag windows. Oops. Bye. You both run, but hamrag spots you. He bursts out of his house and bounds after you, causing the ground to quake at his footsteps. Oh, keep running. Hamrag is strong and loud, but he's definitely not fast. You keep running until he tires of the chase and goes back home to sleep. Sorry, dude. I'm a bad monster. Clouds. Suddenly, a stinging rain pours down. Everyone scatters and gets under cover, even Blistery and Smark. Is that all you've got? Jump and howl in the rain. You leap and shout at the sky, while ice-cold rain drops pelt your hide. Other monsters watch you from their hiding spots, unable to detect if you are brave or crazy. To the rooftops! Every monster and omen is watching you now. You leap and clamber under the roof of your hovel and spring across to Hamrag's roof. Suddenly, lightning begins to crackle and dance in the clouds just above you. Let's jump out of the way. Lightning is faster than any monster, which means it's much faster than you. Your body lights up like a small howling sun as you fall to the ground, but I'm still alive. Yes, you laugh at the pain as everyone applauds your courage. It was foolhardy, but it takes more than that to hurt a monster. Good for me. I'm an idiot. But that's okay. Footprint. Loud, drooly snapping sounds come from the square where you see Proofrock single clawedly taking on a rampaging pack of wolves. He grunts to you for help. Let's push Proofrock to safety and fight the wolves. When the first settles, a pot of wolf stew bubbles happily in the center of the square. Everyone lines up to cheer you and eat. That sounds pretty good, actually. I'd probably eat wolf stew. Hmm. Face. Outside your house, Nash Nash charges from a nearby bush and sends you tumbling. Challenge! She screams at the top of her lungs. It's on. Leap at her and crush her. Splat. Flattened under your bottom, Nash Nash admits defeat. She was always weak to attacks from above. Sorry, dear, I know your weak spots. It's business. Mosquito. After the rain, the last puddles linger. Look into one. You see hundreds of tiny wriggling bugs. Eat the bugs. You suck the dirty puddle into your mouth and spit it out, trapping the squirming mass of minuscule creatures. One quick crunch and they are in your belly. I'm gonna be a fat monster. 
Uh, let's do this one. It looks like a clever face. A small crowd gathers in the square. Prudence and Gritman are in some kind of argument. Uh, let's go see what they're talking about. Gritman says he saw a human wearing a coat made from a monster hide. Oh dear. Prudence says she saw it too, but it was just a costume. He watched the elders discuss the situation calmly and quietly, with only a little clawing and spitting. Mm, let's listen to the debate more. The debate rises into shouting and rock throwing a few times, but it's mostly civil. Prudence keeps shaking her head and smiling as though Gritman is a fool or a monsterling. What does that do to Gritman and Stumper? It makes it flare like lightning, naturally. Let's keep watching. Gritman says humans have clothing made out of monsters. Prudence insists that he's mistaken. Neither shows any sign of backing down. The other elders wander away. Perhaps now they would listen to me. Um. Oh, uh, let's support Prudence. See, I'm always right. Human wear clothes all the time. This fool just thinks some animal's hide is from one of us. Some slimy animal, perhaps. Yeah, like a big furry snail. Precisely like that. Adolescence is fleeting. You've grown beyond youth and become an adult. Trying to sleep here. They surround you, hold you down, not ungently, until you stop struggling. Okay. Neighbors throw you into the center of a great circle of monsters all over the new. They whisper to each other, then look at you and whisper some more. The monsters murmur, mutter, spit, and snarl. They're deciding what def best defines you as a monster. Yell at them to hurry up. Some of the monsters flinch when you raise your voice. It's gratifying, but it doesn't seem to make their, their deliberations any less deliberate. Eventually, though, they come to a decision, and it's about time. The ring of monsters shuffles closer to you, forming a tighter circle. Elders loom over you while the smaller adults crouch low. Your surroundings grow shadowy and dark. What do they want from me? You see concern in some of their faces, but very little respect. So what? Does a monster need respect to grow up? You can become an adult without earning any respect, but when the time comes, all too soon, to become an elder, you'll dissolve and pass away without it. You see concern in some of their faces, but very little respect. Oops. Wait for them to assign you a task. Claws scrape against claws, teeth click against teeth, and snarls echo behind growls. You're ferocious, no doubt about that. Rawr! Someone shakes out a sack. Five angry weasels spill into the circle. They hiss and charge at you. What? Kill them all in one surge of violent action, of course. You jump high in the air with a terrible shriek, landing in the midst of the startled weasel gang. Before they can escape, you've scooped them all into your mouth and bitten their heads off. Spray blood on the cheering crowd. Woohoo! Blood spatter! And I got a little respect. You're an adult now. You grow stronger over time, but your personality is no longer as mutable as it was when you were young. To adulthood. Let's explore. Blood spatter. You stalk the forest, hunting an elusive swift elk. Suddenly it emerges from the underbrush, lowering its antlers and pawing at the ground. It's gonna charge. Let's tear it apart. The elk charges, and you duck, slashing a hole in its chest. But instead of a heart, you find nothing. The elk turns, catches you with its antlers, and flings you into a tree. The elk bounds away. It's unkillable. But there's nothing that's unkillable. Let's go after it. You keep chasing the elk until it pauses to drink from a stream. Then you spring at it, and without fear, and tear it from limb head from body, antler from skull. Ooh. Its pieces are still twitching as you devour them. You're filled with a strange heat, but it soon fades. Other monsters comment on the new swagger in your step as you return to Omen. It's like a magical elk. Chicken. As you explore the whale mist, you notice that the air smells faintly of gingery bread. There, ahead, there's a flock of very fat birds pecking a trail of crumb that winds through the trees. Chase the birds away. You frighten the birds as big as you can. It makes you feel bigger and stronger for a little while. 
Rawr. You're following a deer in the forest when the trail comes to an abrupt end just in front of a cave entrance. The hoofprints look strange, like the deer doubled back, walking backwards in its own tracks. It's a trap. What do you do about it, smart monster? Um, let's turn the trap against the deer. You walk into the f cave and find Hamrig taking one of his famous naps. The huge monster is known for his irritability when it's wakened. A twig snaps in the bushes. The deer is fleeing. Draw them closer. You shriek and crouch, readying your claws. Hamrig starts to wake up. Now go. The deer is crept forward to watch you spring the trap. You catch it by surprise as you leap back out the cave. You kill it with a single swipe of its claws. And that'll teach it. Hamrig stumbles into the cave, half asleep but ready to fight. Excuse yourself. Hamrig stretches his arms and glares at you as you slip away. He snorts, taking in the smell of the fresh deer carcass and looks a little sad. Sorry, buddy. Don't be sleeping. Mm-hmm.